Hey everybody, welcome to my garage and today is wax cleaning day. I'm going to take these old frames with crusty old wax, cut it out and prep the frames for new foundation. What I have is my setup. I've been doing a bunch of different boxes and you know look if you're just doing a couple of them this might be overkill but I'm going to show you the process that I followed for doing boxes and boxes and boxes. The first thing is I set the area up so everything's within reach and I have a bunch of different tools here and I'll show you what they're for. A couple things to go through is some of these are wax foundation, some of them are plastic foundation. I typically try to get rid of the plastic foundation and convert the plastic foundation frames to wedge bar style and I'll show you how to do that. Let me go over a couple things that I have in my toolkit here just to show you what I plan to do with them. First thing is I have a hive tool. This is an easy pry hive tool. It's the kind that I like. Sharp is a good way to go. Uh, you'll use it for scraping down the wax and cutting some of the wax parts out. I don't know what this tool is. I think it's a glazer tool. The tool is used for doing window work. When I use it, I use it to cut the wax out. I take it and run right along the frames this way to cut all the wax away from it. The other tool that I use for that sometimes is my tool. If you don't have one of these, uh, maybe you'll consider getting one. Not specifically for this purpose, but just because they're uh, really handy to have. So this oscillating tool, you can take it and go down through and cut. Now I'll do a couple frames in a few minutes, but I'm just going to run through the tools right now. You need a box cutter, one with a super sharp blade, especially if you're going to be converting plastic foundation frames to regular, and I'll show you what that means. Also on my kit, I have these two tools. These are used for me to get the line for cutting the frames. What I mean by that is what I typically do is take two frames and put them end to end like this and I clamp them together with clamps. And then I use a straight edge here whether it's a ruler like this or whether it's this tool which this happens to be a high part for a plastic and I set it here and with that I can have an edge to cut against and again I'll demonstrate that but that's what these are here for. Now this is a specialized tool. This tool is in the automotive industry. I've used a bunch of different tools including the glazer tool and hive tools to scrape the grooves out of the wax but this tool I found is just perfect. It's used in the auto industry for molding on windows. It's got two wings and these wings actually have a slight curve to them and it makes a perfect indentation to go in and clean out the frames and the handle is absolutely perfect. So I use it to go down through and scrape out the frames and dig out the wax and I don't know that whoever invented this for the auto industry understood how perfect it is for this particular job of cleaning frames. I don't know how I came across this, it's just something I stumbled on the internet. I was looking for different tools, actually trying to figure if I could buy another one of these and I found this. I'll have a link to this in the show notes, in the comments. Other tools that you have at hand, I have a tray to capture the pins that I take out. I have nails to nail back the, the wedge bars. I have a little hammer, of course, you'll use that a bunch. And I have blue tape. After I finish, you can see that I've taped on here frames, no foundation, and so on, label in my boxes, and a couple Sharpies. Now the last tool that I have is an awl. The point of the awl, pun intended I guess, is to go through the holes and clean them out. That frame doesn't have any. Every once in a while you go through and you find that the holes where the pins go in are, are closed by the bees and you just poke them out with this tool. 
So going through the tools, that's what I have in hand. Now you can see my setup. I got the box over here on the left where I pull out. This table is a gardening table. The premise of it is, is up high. Now whatever you get wax on, you're going to ruin. So I made this top specifically for this purpose and every once in a while I just unscrew the top and pop it off. And over here I have my, my tool tray that I can roll around. Down below I have garbage can. You shave off wood or other pieces, you just throw that straight in. And the last thing that I have sitting over here are plastic bags. And it's going to make a lot of noise, as plastic does. Old dog food, cat food bags. I put the wax that I cut out in here. I have three bags. One for just loose scraps of wax that I sweep up and I put in there. The other has dark black comb that I cut out in big sheets. And the last one is for light colored comb. Every once in a while you put a frame together. And the frame might be in use for a season and they build wonky comb. And this is really nice clean comb, almost equivalent to capping's wax. I separate this and melt it differently and I will use this for cosmetics. But the other stuff I do not. I usually use that for who knows what. Um, the really, really dark, crummy, crappy comb. I melt it and I keep it for wax and someday I'll use it for something. I have a dustpan and a broom. You end up sweeping things up a lot. And the last thing that I'll say about my setup before I start cutting into frames. Whatever you do, you're going to drop wax on the floor. And then as you move around, you're going to step in it. On my concrete floor, I'm, I have dirty, ground-in wax on the concrete. I, I don't get concerned about that. But if you're trying to keep your stuff clean, you might want to lay a tarp or something here as you do that so you're not grinding wax and propolis into your concrete. I come through every once in a while with a power washer and power wash this all out and clean it up. So I don't get too concerned about that. All right, basic setup done. Let's go ahead and clean a couple frames for you. By the way, I should note, I'm in my garage clothes. <laughs> my grubby old sweatshirt and, you know, I'm going to put on a podcast later and an audio book. That's what I do. I spend a couple hours in here just kind of working through these. So forgive my appearance. All right, let's go ahead. Okay, the first frame I'm going to start with has wax foundation. As you can see, this has been in service quite a while. It's an old, cruddy comb, uh, ready to go. What you want to do with this comb is cut the sides first, cut the bottom off, pop the bottom out, I'll show you this, and then cut across the top. And then what I'm going to do is take the wedge out and pop the wedge off. Ideally, what I'm trying to do first is get the wax out of the comb. Now you can see this one has the wire foundation in it, crimped wire. I'm going to pop those all out, but I'm not that concerned with it. I'm going to show you one side using the tool. You're just going to go through. Don't cut your table, of course. Now there is a pin in here, which I have to account for. The other side, I know that was loud. I'm going to use this tool and I'm just going to use it and slice. Not as easy. Usually what I try to do is scribe first and then cut through. And again I have a pin in this one too on this side. Now I'm going to cut along the bottom. And I'm going to press this out so that I have it sideways. And then I'm going to take my tool, either a knife or this tool, and I'm going to score both sides of this. I'm not really trying to cut through it. I'm just trying to score it so it'll bend when the time comes that I want to bend it out of the frame. I'm going to just give it a push and bend it. Actually what it turns out is this one has bobby pins in it. So the bobby pins popped out and the comb all popped out. So that's okay. I'm going to take this and put it in my dirty comb. 
Now I might clean some of this off. Now what I'm going to do is clean this up. I, I prefer to get this out of the way before I start digging in. I put the big chunks in here and I sweep the little ones up and put them in the wax debris one. Now what I'm going to do is systematically just go through and scrape this down with my hive tool. I start on the bottom. Now this one has a slit through it. It's not a groove. I'll show you one with a groove in a little bit too. Now when I go to clean the sides, I take the ear and I hook it on the side of my table and I just scrape it down on both sides. Then what I do is clean the ears off, any propolis that's on the sides. Now if your tool is really sharp, sometimes you're going to cut into the woodenware and you could use the scraper side and pull it this way and that will prevent it from digging into the tool. Most of these frames are pretty old, they're hardened, they do pretty well, but either way it works. But if you ever wondered why there's a sharp edge on this side, that's one of the reasons why is for this particular purpose. And as you can tell, it works really well. Now I like to use the blade end to scrape the heavy duty stuff off. And then the scraper end to get it down to the wood. You're gonna go across there and hit that nail. Just make sure you pick your tool up every once in a while so you don't get hung on that nail. Now as you lay that down you're always going to end up putting wood on that. So this is why I like to just keep going every once in a while and sweep this up and keep my table clean. And the efficiency of having the bag set up right here makes it quick. You're not going across or moving around. So I have the inside bar, the bottom bar, and this clean for the most part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out the bottom groove. For this, since it's a groove, there's a way to do it where I just take the knife and I run the knife along the edge and I cut it through. Now I like to cut the knife first and just kind of scrape along and a lot of times it falls right out. If you can't get it out then you can take, take your hive tool and just rub it against the edges and it tends to knock it off. Now that edge is clean and everything's out of there. Now what I'm going to do is take the wedge off. Well, first I'm going to clean my table again real quick. Here I could just use my hands. To take the wedge off I always take the knife and I run it through the groove for the wedge. The bees do somehow get in there and close that up and this just cuts it and it makes it easier. If you don't do this step, a lot of times when you try to pry the wedge up, it will break the wedge. And then you have to get another cleat, which is a pain. So I just take a moment and make sure I do it really well. This also helps to free it up. Sometimes you can just use the knife. Now once I have it free, I go in and I pry with my hive tool till I find the nail. I get on this side of the nail and I push up so I don't break the cleat just separating gently, taking my time. Now I found the nail there. I've already loosened what's to this side of it and I'm pushing it up. I'm not trying to get it all out at once. I'm finding the second nail and I'm to this side of it pushing it up 
And you can see I'm just kind of spreading it at this point. Sometimes if you get too aggressive with it, it breaks the cleat. Now this end you want to push up so it's out this way. Because when you push, if it's against this bar, it's going to break that end. Now what I'm going to do is to this side of the nail, I'm going to push hard, push hard, push hard, and it pops right off. Now a lot of times this is crusted and you can't get it clean when it's down on the bar. I like to set it on top here. Now the nails are sticking down so it's a pain if you try to put it down here. But I rest it on the actual frame and I make sure it's supported on the corner. And here I could give it its final scrape and get it clean. Anything that's on this edge, on the top edge and so on. And with the nails sticking up that's okay because it rests on top of the frame. You don't have to get too fussy about this. Okay, and I'm just going to set this here. Now what I'm going to do is clean this debris out. Just run my hive tool through. This one actually is pretty easy to clean. It all popped right out. And everything's good to go. Now, with this tool, well, by the, by the way, the cleat is out, so I can actually clean this side a little bit better. I've got that clean. With this tool, I take it and I clean the ears off. Sometimes there's propolis stuck to the end of the ears. I take the tool and I set it down and I give it a twist, a turn and a turn. And what that does is it scrapes that ear clean and makes sure that that's good. Sometimes there's a lot of build up there. Same on this end, turn, turn. And I got that clean. Sometimes you'll find some on the ends. Now before I go put this back together and put it back in the box, I take my awl and I clean out the holes. So that if I want to put my pins or wire the frame later, that'll be good to go. Don't forget this step. Now what I do sometimes is they don't go in, give it a little push and a twist, and it tends to open the hole up a little bit. Like that one's a little tight and I'm just wiggling it through. That one's tight too. So but now they're open and you know don't go crazy with a big awl because then your pins will fall out. This one is perfect shape for it. Nice and thin. Just small enough to get the hole in. Okay one quick clean up and then I'll put the cleat back on. Ninety-nine percent of the time you can take this and match it back up for the holes like that one. Sometimes you have to push on the nail to get it to match the hole again because you twisted it when you put it in. But the majority of time you can literally put it right back into the hole that it came out. One, two, of course, I'm going to struggle with this one. So this is that 1%. <laughs> Done. A little bit that way. Done. Now I keep nails to the side. If I find the frame has a little wobble to it or I discover that they didn't have a good corner nail here, I will fix that. Uh, I just look at the frame one more time, make sure there's no wax anywhere. I didn't clean this shoulder off so I'm going to clean that off. And it looks good, good to go, ready to put foundation in. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to put it back in a box. This is a frame that was put into service last year and the bees did not build it out well. This is an example of a frame that has relatively fresh comb. They probably only used it for a month on one side. It's got a little bit of honey in it 
what I'll probably do is cut that out. I don't want to put that in the bag. And then I'll cut the rest of the foundation and I'll just feed this back to the bees if it's there or discard it. Now what I want to talk about is this is a frame that has wax foundation in it. For the wax foundation what I typically do is take the knife and cut the edges to the wax. Both sides. What this is going to do is free up the comb to be pushed out of the frame, hopefully. Now normally I could take and push on one corner and pop it out, and then it's out. Now what I do with this, and I won't do it now, is I scrape the wax off and put it in a bag. I'm just going to set it aside now and show you how to clean this frame. So I would go through and clean this frame exactly as I clean the other one. And actually what I want to do right now is just show the one piece that I didn't do before, which is how to clean a groove. This one has a groove on the bottom, not a slit. So what I'm going to do real quickly is scrape this off. And I'll show you the automotive tool used to clean this one out. So in here, with the plastic foundation or if it's wax, there's always stuff in the groove. And if you try to put foundation in there, it's going to be a pain. It's not going to work really well. So you're going to want to get that groove really clean so that when you go to put foundation in it, you're not going to encounter the foundation getting caught up on old errant wax. So to do that, I'll take my tool. I always try to just keep trying to make sure I keep my tools off to the side. Take my tool and put it down in the groove and pull. And as I do, I'm turning the tool so that this curved little end, the barb, gets underneath and hooks it and pulls it out. Now this one is not gonna give me that much trouble. Well, there's some wax. So I'll just pull it along one side I'll pull it along the other and then I'll pop it up. Now because this was a plastic foundation frame and not a um, wax foundation frame, it cleaned up pretty easy, but cleaning a wax one is just as easy pretty much. It just digs right underneath the groove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this frame real quick and then I'll come back and show you how I cut this frame to make it suitable for a foundation. So give me a minute to go through and clean this up and I'll be right back. Okay, I have the frame clean. I'm ready to cut it. This is the plastic foundation frame. And what I want to do is cut it here so that I can make it a groove frame. Slide foundation in here and slide the crimped wire inside of it. The way that I do this is I take a second frame and I match them up like this. And I take my clamps and I clamp the ears together. This is a piece from a polystyrene hive. It's an entrance. It's got a gap, inch and a quarter, that sets right here. And the premise of this is it gives me a nice straight edge. You obviously probably don't have one of these, but whatever you need, you need an inch and a quarter guide for this. Now different frames have different bar widths, but most of them are universal, so this works really well. You want to take a box cutter with a brand new, fresh, super sharp blade. And you're just going to run it along the edge. And really right now all I'm looking to do is score the wood. And follow my, my straight edge all the way along. I'm just going to score it one or two times. And then I'm going to move it down, make sure I finish. Now one of the things when you're cutting with this is hold it straight up and down. Make sure you're not at an angle or your wedge is going to be awkward. If it gets crooked, it's not the end of the world, but it's always better if you could try and get it straight so you can get it. Now all I'm doing here is just trying to score it so that in the next phase, 
the knife will stay in the groove. So now I'm done. I have a groove cut in the wood. I can take my clamps off and I can just focus on cutting the rest of the way through the groove. So here, I'm not trying to cut it all in one shot. I'm going to make several passes just running, make sure I'm straight up and down through the groove that I cut. And after about four or five passes, with just a slight amount of pressure, it will cut through that. Every once in a while I turn around and go in the other direction. And again, I can't reiterate how important it is to have a new sharp blade. And if you're doing a bunch of boxes like I have with this, um, you're going to want to swap that blade out every once in a while. Now, is there anything wrong with plastic foundation? I don't particularly like it. I know some people who swear by it. Everywhere I encounter it, I swap it out and try to use wax. So that's the reason why I have converted this frame. Now, afterwards, if you wanted to nail this back through and use plastic foundation, it would still work. I'm almost through it. One or two more passes and I should be there. Now, once I get to a certain point, now I'm going to push. And usually when I push, I could break through. And then when you break through, not there yet, so close. Now I'm through. Now I can push a little harder, and once you break through, when you cut, you could tend to cut farther down. I know, it's a weird description, but, oops, I push it. What I mean by that is, like there, you saw that I'm cut, now I could cut probably all the way through. Here it's really important that you try to hold the knife as straight up and down as possible. Now don't get too greedy when you do this and go too early. Like down here it's not cut all the way through, it's deep. There you go. And now I got it. So it'll pop right off. Now what I tend to do is look at this and say, well sometimes like here it did not cut cleanly. I got an angle. I got greedy at the end because I was trying to finish for you. I'll just shave that flat. I'm not going to worry about that with my tool. It's still more than solid enough to... So now I've made that flat. If I ever wanted to use a different wedge than this one, I could do that. Now I'll take my quick hock tool, scrape this off, clean up the frame the inside. And here's where having that box of nails right here is advantageous because I can now secure this back. So you know how you cut it. This will go right back on its place and I can nail it down and I'm sure you know what that looks like. So now if I want to take a foundation frame I could slide the end in, slide the wedge underneath, put the wedge over the wires and this is now a wedge frame no longer plastic. So, I hope, uh, hope I hit everything you were looking for in this. I've done a hundred plus boxes. I'm, I'm really a convert in fresh wax is super important for the bees. And over the years I've accumulated a lot of really old comb. And my public service announcement is get rid of it. It's just not worth it. Um, I think the bees do really, really well too when they're forced to build new comb. It's healthier for the colony for some reason. It's personal opinion. So, good luck. Clean all your frames out. Swap them out every couple years. The last thing that I'll tell you what I do is when I go to put a foundation frame in this, I will write F slash and the year 21 or whatever year it is. If you look at some of my frames, this one said F20 on it from last year. Now I'll wipe that off with rubbing alcohol. That takes off the permanent marker from the Sharpie. And I'll remark it when I put fresh foundation. Whenever I open my hive, I could look at all the top bars and the F number indicates to me how old the foundation is in that frame. So when you put new, the day you put new foundation in, write the F something on it.
That's how I do it. I also have on my frames the name of the manufacturer. If it's Man Lake, a lot of mine say BM for Brushy Mountain. The perspective of that is when you go buy wax foundation in the future, buy it from the same vendor. Their stuff is made to fit in their frames. And you'll know the origin of the frame if you write it on top of the bar. Hope you found this useful. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, please leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.